Ten. Stomach nine, uh, tick studio. Eight, seven. Six. Stomach five, camera one, mice four, one and two. Three. Two. One. Take studio. Hi, I'm Kate Cornell. And I'm Sean Flickinger. And on today's show, we have a lot more to show than normal. A quick sample of what we have is a new logo, the Easter celebration, a promo about the school, and a terrific look at the general music class. But first, our top story. Our top story today is the new logo. In this piece, we talk about the ideas and get some insight from one of our new student teachers, Rochelle Nielsen. Also, we'll talk to some students about what they thought of the new logo and all the hype about the day until its release. We sent a reporter and the best looking host, myself, to report. We talked to student teachers and some students about what they thought of the new logo. I think it's awesome and I think it's time for a change and I, I think, I hope it was re well received by everyone. There's a lot of cool stuff they're going to do with the logo so yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, I think it's cool. We've had the other logo for quite a while so I think it's cool every couple years to switch up the logo and it looks pretty new and pretty awesome. I think the new logo is it's just the head of the wolf and instead of like the full body so it looks like a bit better I think more sharp and stuff instead of just like the paws because they look kind of like a bit different the with the paws and stuff and this looks more cool because all the colors and stuff they picked for it are pretty sweet. Um, it's a good opportunity for our school to get, uh, change up and get something new in. And we talked to one student who felt particularly strong about having a wolf be a, the logo for his school. Uh, a wolf, and then you think of wolves, and they're always together and in the pack, and they, they're they brave, and they work together for the greatest good. We talked to a student teacher, Rochelle Nielsen, about if she had any input on the new process. On the voting process, maybe a little bit. <laughs> for MCTV News, I'm Kay Cornell. Reporting. Next, we have a report about the more recent event, the Easter celebration, held last Thursday before the break. Every year, the school gets together in the gym to celebrate this holiday. This year, it featured a skit performed by the students from the religion retreat. Also, there were speeches from Mr. Kortash and Father Mike. We sent reporter Liam Hodgins to report. Thursday, MCHS held its annual Easter celebration. We asked people who attended the celebration, why is Easter so important to them? Easter is important to me because it signifies uh, that you know Christ is risen, and uh, means a new chapter and a new life. Easter is really important. It's to me the most important uh, religious celebration of the year. It's it's when God gave His only Son, uh, Jesus Christ, and through that gave us uh, eternal life and, uh, and taught us all about love, forgiveness, uh, service. Yeah, it is really important to me. I guess for me as, as, a, as a Catholic and as a Christian, uh, it's central to who I am and to what I believe. That um, uh, we, we look around and we see there's, there's so many examples where, where we live in a culture of death. And so where do we get our hope? And the, the, the sense of hope comes from God who, who had become part of our life in, in, in Jesus. And the whole Easter story is the culmination of that. We asked the attendees, what's the significance of celebrating Easter in the school community? Well, this is a, it's a Christian community. It's a faith-based community. Um, for the most part, it's a Christian community. And, and that's our heritage. That's our legacy. And so why do we celebrate it here? Because it's who we are. It's who we are as a, as a Catholic Christian public school. And so uh, it's our story. It's kind of what I was trying to reflect on, that, that, yeah, the Old Testament set it up, the New Testament says how it's going to happen, but now, the, the Now Testament, that's your story, that's my story, and uh, so who we are makes sense. Celebrating Easter in the school community is important because you have to uh, bring students together and brings out the community atmosphere here at MCHS. 
Yeah, absolutely. Love having Easter celebration. It's an opportunity for us to get together as a school community uh, to celebrate, uh, to learn and spread the message of, of Jesus and, uh, and all that he had to teach us. Uh, so absolutely, I think it's a great opportunity to, uh, like I said, come together as a community. The, the focus of our celebration here today was to make us realize that um, our life is bigger than ourselves. And I think the Easter celebration helps us realize that so that, um, so that we, we come to, to know that, that there's a God or some people would call it a higher power in their life that, has, that makes an impact and, and, and wants to make an impact in our life. And so um, it's important for us to realize that because it becomes a significant part of who we are and, uh, and who we become. For MCTV, this is Liam Hodgins reporting. Next, we have our MCHS promo video. It was a video done by Tim Evans and myself. This particular video was our qualifying video for skills. Most of the other MCTV students did videos to see who would go. Over the next couple of weeks, we will show the other videos done by other MCTV students. Without much left to say, here's the video. The industry loves MCHS students. All the kids from grade 9 to 12, everyone knows each other, everyone gets along. It's, it's, I think it's better that way than going to a school with 1,000, 2,000 kids. You fit right in, there's, there's no trouble becoming a member of MCHS. Great experience, you meet a lot of new people, it's a lot of fun. MCHS, place where you belong. Why did you come to MCHS? Because we got plenty of opportunities for you. We got MCTV, we got cooking, we got sewing, you name it, we got it. Don't believe me? Let's take a walk. We have also different types of clubs like SAD and um, Students Against Drinking and Driving. There's the MCTV program as well. We have forensics. We have so many different opportunities for students here. Uh, being new to MCHS myself this year, I found it a very welcoming school. Uh, the students all get along with each other. Generally, I think it's a, it's a great school. There's uh, lots of options, uh, teachers that really care about the students and uh, I really want them to do well and a and great uh, student body as well who's uh, willing to participate in, in uh, extracurricular activities, student, student council, all kinds of things. I love MCHS. Uh, the students here, um, the, t the staff here, um, everybody, is just, we're just one big huge family. I find that we have a, a excellent fine arts community and a developing graphical arts community which is industry renowned actually. Our, uh, uh, Nate actually offers courses through MCHS as a pre-admission, so once you get through MCHS, you're just getting into Nate's a cinch. Uh, I think they're pretty awesome. I mean, the teacher all, teachers are always willing to help. They're always willing to stay after class and give you extra help, and uh, they're very informative. Uh, I think it's definitely unique, one of a kind, because I know a lot of schools don't have the technology we have here. Now that you've seen and heard all the opportunities MCHS offers, it's your turn. Come in, visit our website, or call to explore MCHS more. There are many opportunities here, and they're yours to grasp. So now we have the weather. Since it has been pretty crazy and wild lately, I know we all want to see it slow down and pick a season. Now, with our up-to-date current weather here in the MCTV studio, we will look to our weather expert, Darian Petrie, for the future weather patterns. Thanks, guys. Now let's look at the conditions. In Whitehorse, we have 8 degrees. In Vancouver, it's 9 with rain. Regina, 18, Yellowknife, negative 4, Winnipeg, 18, in Toronto, it'll be 13, in Winnipeg, 23, St. John's, 3, and in Calumet, negative 11. Now let's take a look at Alberta. Here are the things. Uh, at high level, it is 11, Grand Prairie, 10 in rain, Jasper, 6 in rain, Banff, there's a chance of sleet and it's 4, Medicine Hat, 14, Calgary, thunderstorms and 8, Red Deer, 9 in thunderstorms, Edmonton, thunderstorms and 11, and Fort McMurray, 14. Now, let's head over to the current conditions. Uh, current conditions, it is 6 degrees Celsius. Wind is northwest, 17 kilometers an hour. The relative humidity is 
sunrise is 6.05 a.m. and sunset 8.58 p.m. Now let's take a look at the seven-day forecast. Thursday, there will be sleet and nine and low of negative one. Friday, eight and low of negative one. Saturday, 10 and low of negative three. Sunday, 14, low of one. Monday, 16, low of zero. Tuesday, 10 with slight chance of rain and low of six. And Wednesday, cloudy, 12, low of three. So that's our look for the next seven days. Now we can go back to the studio to Cade. Cade? Thanks, Darian. Let's shift our focus from here at MCHS to Legal School, where they just recently held a Wakeathon fundraiser for the Japan Relief Fund. Many kids went to the school from 7 p.m. on Friday and stayed till 7 a.m. the next day. Through the night, students participated in many activities. We sent Tanner Gazzaloni to stay the night and report on this event. I went to Legal School and covered the story about the Wakeathon and asked students what they thought and were expecting about it. I think the best part of the Wakeathon is probably going to be the pizza. So we're very glad to have this kind of um, this opportunity to spotlight our efforts and our great time here at Legal School. All the proceeds of our Wakeathon will be going to the Japan Earthquake and Tsunami re uh, Relief. And so uh, after we pay for our costs, we'll be sending some money over to Japan to help all the victims that are there. We have 80, over 80 students here tonight. And so that's going to be, uh, not only are they going to have, they're having a great time with lots of wonderful activities, but they're going to be able to send a, a really great check to Japan. Uh, we anticipate that it, it will be an annual event. Well, the Wakeathon is a great event for our students at Legal School. It's a way that they can uh, uh, show uh, how they want to contribute back to the community. The students, they enjoy the evening, so I'm expecting that it is going to be a long uh, tradition here at Legal School. Well, it is very positive for our students. We've had a very successful year. Of course, this time last year, our um, uh, we had the Wakeathon without the gymnasium, so we did lots of activities outside. The kids just adjusted and it was wonderful. Woo! The Wakeathon is really uh, geared from the kids, so their ideas, it, all the ideas for the Wakeathon come from the students. So really, it depends on the students and what they want to do throughout the evening. Some of them get very creative. I know this year there was a hot dog eating contest, and uh, um, so it just depends on what, what ideas the students bring to, to this event. It's pretty good. Uh, I like it because there's uh, sports and there's dance and everything and yeah. The hot dog eating contest and everything to like tournament sports and everything and all that stuff. It's uh, just like free time. At 7 in the morning the staff prepared pancakes for the lucky students. I'm Tanner Gazzaloni. Thanks for watching. See you later. Up next is our general music class. This is a newer course being offered here at MCHS. It is taught by our favorite math teacher, Mr. Nolan. He focuses on teaching Southern blues style music. To share this new course with us is general music student and MCTV reporter, Ty Shrum. Today on MCTV, we take a look at Mr. Nolan's general music guitar class. I joined this class because I like playing guitar and I'd like to learn a, new, a couple of things about it. I don't really have a guitar teacher, so Mr. Nolan's a great help, and it's pretty awesome. Mr. Nolan is a great teacher who spends one-on-one -on -one time with each and every student. I don't know, Mr. Nolan's really good at teaching. He's really, like, shown us a lot of new things. He keeps it fun. Yeah. We then asked the students about what they wanted to learn from this class. Learning chords, scales, learning how to solo without needing, and learning how to play with other people. I want to learn how to solo without lo looking up how to solo, just soloing by ear. I want to play a bit of country in an electric guitar because not all songs that you could play on the electric guitar don't sound as good as they would on an acoustic. So I just want to learn how to play some cool songs and just when I'm like out camping or something I'll just bring my guitar and just relax and play a bit of finger picking guitar. I would like to learn some more songs about like finger picking and stuff because I I'm a guitar player. That not just actually play random songs on the internet. I like to actually learn how to play songs and make up my own songs. Yeah, a few more songs would be nice. I don't know. Because um. you can't really go up to someone and be like, look, I can play a chord. <laughs> but they're impressed if you can play a song. Exactly. 
We asked Mr. Nolan to give us a recap on his class. I, uh, I saw a lot of students carrying guitars and uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to offer something to them. What I'm teaching is, uh, it comes from the North Carolinas, it's called a Piedmont style blues. And uh, most of the folks that I've studied uh, were alive in the 30s and 40s, so it's an acoustic blues finger picking style course. Well I hope all the students uh, foster a lifelong approach to the guitar. Uh, because it's one of those things, the more you learn, the more you learn you don't know. So hopefully when students finish the course, they'll have picked up a few things, but most importantly, they continue to play and play and play and they don't stop. I'm Ty Shrum for MCTV, signing off. Wow, that sure was a great close to today's show. It sure was, Cade. So, Darian, how does the weather look like for next week? Well, looking into next week, we see that it is going to be rainy and cloudy, but it will stay above zero with the highest temperature being roughly 15 degrees. That is great, but at least it'll be a little warm. That is an okay thing, but the bright side of it is looking, it's looking like it's going to become spring. That's right, Sean. From all of us here at MCTV News, I'm Gary Petrie. I'm Kate Cornell. And I'm Sean Flickinger. Have a great, a great afternoon. afternoon and stay, stay classy, classy Mournville. Mournville.